Welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the Thevenin's theorem in AC circuits. We will use this theorem to determine how we can create a maximum power transfer in a circuit. Of course we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in SPI simulations. We have the following situation. We have given the circuit, electric circuit here, with these voltage source Vs, which is given by 20 cosine 2 pi times 10 to the power 4 T volts. So the frequency is 1 or 10 kilohertz and it has an amplitude of 20 volts we have the r1 r2 c and there's also a load resistor here so we have here in this case four components and one ac voltage source now using this Stefanens theorem we would like to determine the first case the expression of the load current that is actually this load current here in time domain in the second case we'd like to determine or calculate the load impedance and the values associated with this impedance so the electrical component values to have a maximum power transfer to the load so the second case means actually the following you first we need to determine the load impedance expression and then from there the components the values let's say the resistor capacitor or the inductor values okay let's first look at our cal calculation the first situation a now before we move on with the actual calculations in detail the procedure for determining the Teffen equivalent circuit this goes like so so we have the step one which is then removing the load actually from the circuit and then calculate the Teffenen impedance or Teffenen resistance if you don't have an AC circuit then calculate the Teffenen voltage and then construct this Teffenen equivalent circuit using this impedance and this voltage VTH and then connect your load RL or if you have of course an impedance that then load your impedance to it and then you have the complete circuit again back so in our case first a question we start with the first step which is then removing this load resistor so this will go so we have actually here now open circuit step two is calculate now the Teffenen impedance ZTH and that is actually looking here we need to first disable all the AC or DC or whatever all the sources independent sources so they are gone so in this case we have an ac voltage source an ac voltage source disabled means it's short so this is then shorted here that means r1 will be now effectively parallel to this capacitor c so then you're looking between the node a and b and you see the z t h and this part here given here in pink that is our impedance we call zp which is a parallel combination of this r1 and c so our impedance Thevenin impedance looking between nodes a and b will be then r2 plus this zp which is our impedance we need to calculate and zp as said is the parallel combination of r1 and this uh, c which is the uh, capacitor here which has an reactance which is called an x of c and this minus j is because we talk about the capacitor and if you have a inductor and it will be a plus j you can of course write this down like so so the product divided by the summation that's actually shown here and now we can also write it like so so move this minus sign in front and you have this clean expression let's first discuss how we can calculate this x of c x of c is determined by this expression which is the reactors of this capacitor 1 over the omega c omega we have already so 2 pi times 10 to the power 4 and this 40 nano farad is given here in the question so we have here almost 400 ohms so 398 ohms then we have looking at this one we have also the r1 which is 600 so you would substitute everything here and we have now this expression which is also written like so if you just do the multiplication here also now we have our expression of our zp which is our impedance here so the zp is also calculated if you want to add it up to this one so we need to go from this to the uh, cartesian form so we can then multiply the numerator and denominator so here by the complex conjugate of this one which means we have then 600 minus j398 you multiply it by 600 plus j398 that means you take the opposite sign of the imaginary value and that will be then like so now when you work it out you actually work out the parentheses here so you do this times that one and this times that one that will be then the numerator and the denominator will be always 600 squared plus 398 squared so we actually square each of these one and then add them up now that's the result so just multiply these out you will get this result and then work out this to, uh, completely so you just do this part divided by the result here and then also for the imaginary part and you get this result so 
83 minus J 276 ohms. Okay, now we can add them easily together with this R2. So the R2 is then plus this one together will be then 500 plus 183 minus J 267, I mean 76. And then you have 683 minus J 276 ohms. Okay, now taking these two values we just determined here, and let's go now to our third step, which is now calculating the Tefanen voltage VTH. Tefanen voltage between the nodes A and B is actually the open circuit voltage. That means we need to look at the voltage between nodes A and B. And when this is open, there is no current flow to, through this resistor R2. So we actually measure now the voltage across the capacitor. So the open circuit voltage is now Tefanen voltage. And we can use now the voltage divider rule here in order to calculate now the voltage across this capacitor, which is effectively also the voltage between nodes A and B. Again, you use the reactance here formula for the capacitor, and then you divide by the complete R1 and the reactance of this capacitor times the Vs. And now the Vs is given here as the capital letter, which is actually a phasor. So we need to define that here using this time domain and the frequency domain. Now we have here 20 phase, zero degrees, because there is no phase shift here given in this cosine expression. And the amplitude is here 20. So you put it here, this expression. And now you have also this X of C, which is done from here. And you also have your uh, R1 minus J X of C. So everything is now here. Now we need to do the, some division here, also some multiplication. So it will be wise to put all of these uh, elements here in the polar form. So this is polar form. So we need to also make this a polar form, also this in polar form. So what does it mean? Actually, you make the expression here, which is now again as minus J and 398. You know that minus J means minus 90 degrees, and you actually put it then at the end, and that is your face, and this is your amplitude of this expression. This was easy, but for this one, you need to use the length of this expression. And then also the argument. The length can be calculated using the square root of 600 squared plus 398 squared together. And that is the 720 approximately. And for the phase or the argument, you didn't do arc tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. That is actually shown here. That's only valid, by the way, this formula for the first and the fourth quadrant. Then you can calculate here using the multiplication of 20 and the 398 over 720 that will give us 11.06 approximately now for the phase you need to do minus 90 degrees plus zero degrees minus minus 34 degrees and you get here minus 56 degrees so this is not the expression of our tevanum voltage in the polar form now going to the time domain you take this amplitude you put it here in front the cosine again 2 pi times 10 to the power 40 and this minus is this this phase angle is then from here, minus 56 degrees, again in volts. Now, steps 4 and 5, we can combine them, so we can now construct our Tefanen current circuit and then connect right away the load that's actually shown here. So this is now ZTH, VTH, and we have here the A and B connected now in between, we have our load resistor. Okay, we need to have this load current, which is actually from this original circuit. Now, the circuit is much easier to uh, use and calculate. Because the load resistor here, I mean the load current, can be calculated using this complete simple series combination. And this is now our Thevenin equivalent circuit. So the load current is then given by here, the voltage here in the phasor notation, divided by the complete impedance, which is then RL plus ZTH. So that will be then 11.06 phase of minus 56 degrees over this 100 ohms given in the equation, in the question. And also this ZTH, which is our Tefanen impedance. Okay, now let's put it again together here. It will be then 783 and minus J276. And again, we convert that like we did, uh, as we did it here in the polar form. So we get now ex expression like so. Now we can divide it by these 11.06 over this 830 and also the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator, then you get actually this one, which is then effectively now 13.3 milliamps as in amplitude and a phase of minus 37 degrees. And when you go into the time domain, which is really easy, just 
convert that and look at your template here it will be then this amplitude milliamps and your cosine 2 pi times 10 to the power 40 which is always the same but now you get a phase of minus 37 degrees so we've answered actually question a here let's now discuss the simulation results for this question a okay here are the plots for the input voltage vs in blue and the load current here in red now what do we see and again these are the expressions for the load current and the source voltage you see here the 13.3 milliamps and the 20 volts is given here this is what we have calculated from the previous discussion this is the circuit i have used in the stina ti spy simulator you see here the vs the r1 r2 the capacitor and also measure here the current here which is in this branch this is now here given also in the magnitude and the phase you see also the load voltage load resistor now in addition we can present the simulation results also like so we see here the dc level which is zero which is normal because we talk about pure sine waves the amplitude also shown here for the output voltage 1.331 volts which is also calculated using the this current flowing here times 100 ohms using ohms law then you have this much current i mean this much voltage the phases here is almost minus 37 degrees also for the resistor because the pure resistor will not adjust the phase will keep the phase as it is in the current here now what do we see here let's discuss this in detail we see here in the red curve the load curve the maximum value here at this time so 13.24 milliamps so a little bit larger or i mean a little bit smaller than actually what we have calculated and you see here at this time 310.25 microseconds now this peak here for the input voltage was actually before so this actually delayed that's why we have this minus 37 degrees but there is a delay here in delay time so this here is given in the delay time so we start at this time 300 seconds as 20 volts which is our peak value for your input vs later 10.25 microseconds later you get the peak of your output or load current so the delay time here is just calculated by this so 10.25 microseconds so how do we convert that to the phase because this was the minus 37 degrees so we need to discuss that how we do that now you know that your omega of your system is 2 pi times 10 to the power 4 radians per second so use that so this is the formula the phase shift theta is equal to omega times the t in this case the t is the del delay time or delta t so you substitute the values we have found here and you get here 0 0.644 radians now this phase is given in radians and in order to go to the degrees you need to just do the multiplication by 180 over pi so just convert the radians to degrees you get here very close to 37 degrees as we wanted so you don't see of course a minus sign here but you see here the blue line is leading the red line or the red line is lagging the red line uh, blue line so you see actually there is indeed a delay to the right okay let's now discuss the question b here so we need to calculate the load impedance zl you see the circuit has changed we need to de determine this load impedance and the values associated with this impedance so we need to get the electrical component values to have a maximum power transfer so we talk about the maximum power transfer now we know for maximum power transfer the tevalent equivalent circuit we have made and constructed in the question a is helpful so we will use that also here so maximum power transfer for the load we require as said before that the load impedance here must be the tefanin impedance complex conjugate so you see here this star here so that means actually the following we know that our expression of the tefanin impedance is 683 minus j 276 ohms so this asterisk or complex conjugate means you need to make your imaginary value at the reverse sign so in this case you go from minus to plus that's it that's the only uh, operation you need to make so we have our expression of the load impedance so we need to make this also using actual components or so resistors capacitors or inductors but the required load impedance can be constructed using this expression a series combination of the resistor and inductor so we need to have an rl circuit why now this is a pure resistive part so this is just a uh, real value so it needs to be a resistor and i see here a plus j and then some value of course this plus j means i have an inductive action so pure inductor can make the job here 
So I have this ZL, so this is our expression for the load impedance, so the resistor, a new one, and the, also the reactance of that inductor we will calculate shortly. So the resistor should be 683 ohms, so the resistor is like so, this, this is done. And for the reactance XL, I need to have 276 ohms, that is given by this expression, so I need also XL of this 276 ohms. But we know the reactance is given by the omega times L, this is the expression for the inductor reactance. And we know the omega, we also know here the XL, so I can now express the value for the inductor L using this expression. So we know this 276, we know the omega from the Vs, that's the source voltage frequency. By the way, all in all components the frequencies are the same, so we are not going to change that. that that's why we also say that this is a steady state analysis. Now when you substitute here the values, you get here almost 4.4 milli or 4.39 milli Henry. Now we have our resistor and the inductor we require for this load. So the load means that we have a series RL circuit with these two values. Now let's now look at the simulation results. Before we do that, let's also construct here the circuit. This is the circuit, you see the VS, the R1, R2 and the C. Again, these two, I mean, three components and the voltage source, that's the same. The only change here is that we don't have this load resistor of 100 ohm anymore, but we have a R and the L. Let's discuss this one by one. Now the V Tevenin, the voltage what we had before, was given by this expression, which was actually some 11.06 volt, but the phase was minus 56 degrees. Now you see here that the load current has also almost the same current, of course, because of the rounding of errors, but this should be exactly as minus 56 degrees, and you see that actually here also. So what's happening here? Now the thing is, if you want to have a maximum power transfer in their pure resistive values, in the pure resistive circuit, then the load resistor must be equal to the source resistor. Now, but now we made it actually the complex conjugate, so that you see here the imaginary values are disappearing. So in this case, you only have six, 683 and the 683 from the source and from the load. So that means your load current will not change the phase of your input voltage because in this case it's the Tevenin voltage. Now that means we should also have in our load current or the value for your phase of minus 56 degrees, which is also what we have here. So looking at the table here, you see also the full details. You see also here the Vs again, but also here that the phases indeed for the RR2, which is then this one is indeed here minus 56 degrees. So the phase of the load current, as said before, is the same as the phase of the Tefanum voltage, thus the impedance seen from Tefanum voltage is per resistive, and that is what we need in order to create the maximum power transfer. And when we talk about the maximum power transfer, we talk, we'll talk about the maximum real power, and not the, about the reactive powers that goes in the reactive components like the inductor or the capacitor. All right, for our example, considering the Tefanen's theorem, using this theorem we have calculated the load current here in question A, when this was a pure resistive part, so just RL, and then we moved on to question B and then determined the impedance in order to have the maximum power transfer, and then calculated the required components to make that load impedance ZL. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section, I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.